General Westmoreland, General Groves, distinguished guests, and gentlemen of the Corps. As I was leaving the hotel this morning, a doorman asked me, where are you bound for, General? And when I replied West Point, he remarked, beautiful place. Have you ever been there before? <laughs> Duty, honor, country. Those three hallowed words reverently dictate what you ought to be, what you can be, what you will be. They are your rallying points to build courage when courage seems to fail, to regain faith when there seems to be little cause for faith, to create hope when hope becomes forlorn. The unbeliever will say they are but words, but a slogan, but a flamboyant phrase. But these are some of the things they do. They build your basic character. They mold you for your future roles as the custodians of the nation's defense. They make you strong enough to know when you are weak and brave enough to face yourself when you are afraid. They teach you to be proud and unbending in honest failure, but humble and gentle in success. Not to substitute words for action, not to seek the path of comfort, but to face the stress and spur of difficulty and challenge. To learn to stand up in the storm, but to have compassion on those who fall. To master yourself before you seek to master others. To have a heart that is clean, a goal that is high, to learn to laugh, but yet never forget how to weep, to reach into the future, yet never neglect the past, to be serious, yet never to take yourself too seriously. To be modest, so that you will remember the simplicity of true greatness, the open mind of true wisdom, the meekness of true strength.
And what sort of soldiers are those you are to lead? Are they reliable? Are they brave? Are they capable of victory? Their story is known to all of you. It is the story of the American man-at-arms. My estimate of him was formed on the battlefield many, many years ago and has never changed. I regarded him then as I regard him now as one of the world's noblest figures, not only as one of the finest military characters, but also as one of the most stainless. His name and fame are the birthright of every American citizen in his youth and strength, his love and loyalty, he gave all that mortality can give. Always for them, duty, honor, country. Always their blood and sweat and tears as we sought the way and the light and the truth. You now face a new world, a world of change. The thrust into outer space of the satellite spheres and missiles mark the beginning of another epoch in the long story of mankind. In the five or more billions of years, the scientists tell us it has taken to form the Earth. In the three or more billion years of development of the human race, there has never been a more abrupt or staggering evolution. We deal now not with things of this world alone, but with the illimitable distances and as yet unfathomed mysteries of the universe. We are reaching out for a new and boundless frontier. And through all this welter of change and development, your mission remains fixed, determined, inviolable. It is to win our war. Yours is the profession of arms, the will to win, the sure knowledge that in war there is no substitute for victory, that if you lose, the nation will be destroyed, that the very obsession of your public service must be duty, honor, country. You are the leaven which binds together the entire fabric of our national system of defense. From your ranks come the great captains 
who hold the nation's destiny in their hands the moment the war toxin sounds. A long gray line has never failed us. Were you to do so, a million ghosts in olive drab, in brown cocky, in blue and gray, would rise from their white crosses, thundering those magic words, duty, honor, country. The shadows are lengthening for me. The twilight is here. My days of old have vanished, tone and tint. They have gone glimmering through the dreams of things that were. Their memory is one of wondrous beauty watered by tears and coaxed and caressed by the smiles of yesterday. I listen vainly, but with thirsty ear for the witching melody of faint bugles blowing revelry. A far drum beating the long road. In my dreams, I hear again the crash of guns, the rattle of musketry, the strange, mournful mutter of the battlefield. But in the evening of my memory, always I come back to West Point. Always there echoes and re-echoes duty, honor, country. Today, marks my final roll call with you. But I want you to know that when I cross the river, my last conscious thoughts will be of the core and the core and the core. I bid you farewell.